Yeah. Baseball season. Mm -hmm. It's almost here. This one. Yeah. Talks about as it every day. As far as I'm concerned, it's here. <laughs> <laughs> Our next guest spent 15 years playing Major League Baseball, including for the 1999 and 2000 World Series champions. The New York Yankees. That's right. But as Jason Grimsley will tell you, he doesn't think his calling in life was to win the World Series. Instead, he thinks it's to inspire and uplift others by telling his life story. In his debut memoir, Cross Stitched, One Man's Journey from Ruin to Restoration, he details the highs and lows of his life, including a career-ending scandal for using performance-enhancing drugs, a battle with alcohol and drug addiction, and an attempt to take his own life. This man has lived. Yeah. Mm. Oh. Ooh, can't wait to dive into this one. That's right. So Jason's life in recovery is a testament to his faith and how it helped him turn his life around for the better. And he's joining us live this morning to talk all about it. Welcome to New York Living. Sir, thank you for being here. Thanks That's for having right. me. Appreciate Thanks. it. Yeah. Sorry I was a little late getting here. It is okay. <laughs> you know, when you're trying to get across town on St. Patrick's Day, even for a major leaguer, it could be a little tough. It was, it was a little rough, but I did, <laughs> you know I did what? get out and run Lucky the last for mile. You, so. We're friends now. I'm the traffic reporter here, 4 a.m. Right. to 9 a.m. I'll give you my number. You text me if there's <laughs> yes, any issues say, ever. Thank you. Like you Alternate side parking, yes. Mm -hmm. Do I have to feed mm -hmm. the meter? Mm -hmm. Yes, no? Mm -hmm. Let's get into this book because I think what's so interesting, and we were just talking about this earlier, all of us are athletes. Obviously, you're the professional. Um, you feel like there's nothing greater than doing this thing. Yet, you found a different calling which inspired you to write this book. Why do it now? What? Yes, wh ma'am. Um, you know, I thought my entire life my purpose was to play baseball. Yeah. And then uh, at the age of 39, when that ended, you know, there's a hole in the middle of me, and um, I had no idea who I was or where I belonged. Yeah. And there was something that happened to me when I was really young. I was, I was molested and abused and didn't tell anybody until I was 48. And I did what I always did. I put it in a box, buried it, mm -hmm. and used it as sort of fuel. Yeah. You know, I was, uh, wasn't very nice to people when I was younger, um, extremely reactive. I believe you, when that happens to you, as, as a young person, you become either an abuser or a protector. Mm -hmm. And I became an extreme protector. Yeah. And, um, you know, baseball's over. I'm lost. I had no ground again faith. Mm. Even though in '99 I was I was saved and came to know the Lord, mm -hmm. I fell away hard, and then I felt like I was a hypocrite. Mm. I didn't deserve anything. I was undeserving, unforgivable, and then um, everything turned around. Uh, 2015, like, you, like we talked about earlier, when I, I attempted to take my life and failed at that, and I looked at it as a failure. I said I can't mm. do anything right mm. in that moment. Mm. And then through my wife and my family, I was shown grace, and then through that grace, God showed me His grace. Yeah. And God's never spoken to me. I haven't heard an audible voice, but I can recognize the, the direction he's pointing me, the sure. certain nudges sure. now in my life. And this is a result of that. The book, and I, I mean, just hearing your story, one part that, I mean, it's all so moving and powerful, but one part that sticks out to me personally is how you kind of felt lost after it all ended. And I can only imagine that if not every single other professional athlete than most, feel the same way yeah. you know it, it's your full-time job for however many years for your life it's what you get up you do every day you have that competitive drive and then it ends so this book has been out for a little while now what have you found the reception of it to be oh it's been great you know I've, and you don't just have to be an athlete to, no to, no ma'am no to, not at all to any, find any, meaning you know, in this in any anything in life you know we're we're called to a higher purpose i sure. believe and you know we get lost in uh, the material part of this world mm -hmm. we get lost in the ego and the, the recognition and our defini de definition of success. Sure. And the thing I love about the Bible and Jesus' word is our success is only in our relationship with him. Yeah. And mm -hmm. everything else is going to take care of itself. I wonder now that you've written this book um, and you've had this massive chapter of playing in the majors, as the evolved Jason that you are now, I won't say different, but you've clearly evolved from 1999 and 2000. What are, how do you look back at that time in your life? Because, you know, as New Yorkers, we rally around our, our favorite baseball team and we rally around, we're such huge fans. And I have to believe that the, the Jason who won the pennant in 99 and 2000 is a different Jason than the, than the person who wrote this cross stitch. So how do you look back at it now? Uh, With the same fondness, different? Oh, it's, it's, there's a lot more love, a lot more I, enjoy, I actually enjoy it more now than I, I probably did then. Mm. You know, I, when I come to New York and when I do certain events, I'll, I'll wear my ring. 
Yeah. And by the way, <laughs> which I grabbed right. immediately when he walked in. He weighs, here. He's two pounds heavier right now with this thing on. I'm just gonna and, touch it. It's so special. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's the joy I get out of it. Yeah. You know, it it was a. I got to live it. I got to experience sure. it. But when 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 I meet people and they see it, I'll actually take it off my hand and let them hold it and take yeah. pictures with it. That's that's the joy I get out of sure. it. Sharing it with other people. And um, now I, I look back. You know, hindsight's twenty twenty twenty. Obviously. Yeah. And um, the things that happened to me when I was younger, between the abuse and, and the loss, and the many times I probably should have died and didn't. Mm -hmm. the, I was in ICU when I was younger. I cut off my left big toe and part of my foot. Probably should have bled to death. I didn't. Just there's many instances like that growing up, and through the through the addiction and through the multiple rehabs and multiple psych wards, you know, everybody asked me, would I change anything? The only thing I change is the hurt that I caused my family and people mm. that I love and, and friends. But going through what I, what I went through, no, yeah. I wouldn't change a thing. Because yeah. there's there's no way that I wouldn't be I wouldn't have been molded and shaped the way God designed me to be yeah. to, to be. Had in you a, not gone through all that stuff? No, number one, I have a platform. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was going to say the platform. When you say that, that we have your picture of you and your pinstripes, what what do you think when you look at that, Jason? Uh, just um, with the pinstripes. No, that, <laughs> that right there was old timers game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I look uh, not quite as in shape as I was. I have a whole lot less hair. But uh, the the one thing I absolutely loved about that is my wife and my my three kids were there. They were able to see it. Mm. And my boys were five and three at the time when I was here. And my little girl, she was she was an infant. She yeah. doesn't even remember. But they got to see me go on the field, and they got How to see me in the fun. uniform. Oh man! And they were up there, and I got to wave at them. And um, Funny thing was, my, my daughter came in a day before my wife and my two boys did, so we, we had a, we had a chance to spend the day together. Sweet. And uh, we were at the hotel, and we came down, and there were fans everywhere. They knew we were staying at the hotel yeah. we were staying at. And we walked outside, and I started signing autographs. And she was like, Daddy. And my daughter's 19 years old, and she's, she's walking. <laughs> we get done, and we're going to have breakfast. She said, Dad, that's weird. <laughs> I said, my dad's famous. I said, well, honey, I was a sort of a kind of a little I was, little I was kind of a big deal, baby. <laughs> I what can I say? Big deal. Well, we th I mean, I personally, as a Yankee fan, we thank you so much for what you did back on the team, yeah. you know, all those years ago. And, I, and, and we thank you for writing this book because yeah. both parts of your life are equally as important to the, your fans yeah. and to well, thank the you. masses thank you much. in general. I appreciate, I appreciate the, the opportunity to come here and talk to you ladies. It's been Absolutely. a pleasure. And by the way, all the proceeds from the book are going to Emerging Grace Ministries. We're building a home for young adolescent girls that have been sex trafficked. Mm. There's over 16,000 animal shelters in the U.S. There's less than 800 beds for these girls. Wow. For them to, a long-term care facility for them Important to Important nonprofit for you to, to yes, partner with. Hey, listen, come back. Opening day is just a few weeks away. I know. Away. I'd love to. You have. Even though you announced for the You next, have a come seat back. in my booth at City <laughs> Field. I am proof Ooh, that, I the two, that the two teams can come together. And I'll meet you at 161 off the, uh, <laughs> off the, off the subway, <laughs> and we'll, we'll go to the real park. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. God bless both of you. The book is Thank called Cross Stitched One Man's Journey from Ruin to Restoration. It's out now wherever you get your books.